Hello everybody, I'm sending you greetings from Prague. My name is Ilona, I'm a local tour guide, meaning uh, tour guide of Prague and uh, Czech Republic. And today I would like to invite you for a walk through Prague, a uh, walk that would uh, represent Art Nouveau architecture in Prague. Prague is obviously famous for many architectural styles. There's enough of Gothic, uh, Baroque, Renaissance and so on. But uh, Prague has a very good uh, presentation of uh, nice, uh, really significant Art Nouveau buildings. One of them we are looking at, but before I tell you about it, I would like to switch in my direction and say hello. So, well, here I am. So, uh, nice, nice to see you again. Welcome to one of uh, the tours that I have prepared for you. So, you can just uh, sit down and uh, watch this tour through your computer, through your cell phone or whatever device you use, no matter. Uh, you'll not get tired. I will do some walking for you and I will inform you about everything. But now I'll switch back to what I was pointing on. Well, this is the house called Unovaku and it's one of the most important representatives of Art Nouveau architecture in Prague. Well, one of the first ones, not the first ones, but one of the first ones in Art Nouveau style. And uh, Art Nouveau, in the, in the name that comes from French language, you may hear the meaning new art. After the 19th century, representing mostly uh, re historicism in architecture, meaning uh, architects were trying to pick up the inspiration in Baroque and put it in new com uh, context. Gothic and Renaissance and combine it with some new ideas. But uh, it was not really that, that new and that uh, representing uh, anything um, fresh. And suddenly this Art Nouveau comes and uh, it, it brings uh, new ideas. So what are those new ideas? I would say that it was like somebody opened the window and could see how everything uh, uh, is fresh. Uh, the nature turns green and the flowers are blooming and uh, trees are in blossom and the birds are singing and suddenly there is this romanticism around and all that was applied in architecture. So it was very new. Well, in uh, United States, you may also use the term Art Deco. But I have to explain that Art Nouveau was first. That's why it's called new. And Art Deco, that was started only after 1925. And the difference? So while Art Nouveau is very ornamental, then Art Deco then gets into geometrical lines, becomes smoother, more straight-lined, uh, yet very, uh, very decorative. So as like Art Deco, Art Decorative. Uh, very important for Art Nouveau was the uh, exhibition, international exhibition in Paris, the year 1900. That was what uh, was the boom of Art Nouveau in the world. And now let's, let's see, I would like to show you the most significant buildings in Art Nouveau style in Prague and we'll start by this one, Unovaku, that means at Novaks. There used to be some older buildings here, there was even a brewery, but all that was torn down at the beginning of the 20th century and in between the years 1901 until 1904 Gradually, the new building was constructed. That's what we are looking at. And in this case, it was the work designed by Oswald Polivka. I'm going to mention him also in context of the last building, then later municipal house and so on. Well, what we can see, there's also a beautiful mosaic on the facade by painter Jan and you see we are on a very busy street, just the tram passed by, on, a, uh, on Vodičkova street. Uh, just around the corner there's Wenceslas Square. And I want to speak about this beautiful mosaic uh, that was designed by Jan Preisler. 
and it's a allegory of trade and industry even though it's hard to distinguish these particular motifs because uh, it's more focused on celebration of spring feast of spring you may you may see in the center how uh, those who are here in the middle there is a man sprinkling sprinkling flowers around ladies around him young girls are, are, are dancing and then you can find uh, some professions and you can identify there's a uh, shepherd and uh, spinner there is a weaver well we are looking at weaver here on the right and there is a trade man so those are the details that represent trade and industry so beautiful work that's uh, very much focused on the organic motifs if you have a look on the metal work on uh, the balcony for instance this like triangle shaped balcony uh, the metal work looks like that there are some plants growing the same on this longer and look down here by the entrance also very beautiful Art Nouveau decoration in a moment we'll walk through and we'll see it more in detail you can also find uh, dates let me the first uh, building constructed here was in Neo uh, Baroque style. I'm trying to find the date, and it's it's here, 1878. 1878, and uh, on the opposite side, let me find it, 1903. I hope I'm pointing the the, the proper way. 1903. So that was the beginning of Art Nouveau. House Unovaku. Uh, it belonged to the family of uh, Mr. Novak, Josef Novak, who was not only tailor but he was a very successful entrepreneur in textile uh, industry. So no wonder that uh, the motifs on the facade were very much on this textile industry. Well, this was the beginning of Art Nouveau. Later on, this was extended by the same architect for the building on the right, but that's about 1930. And also we have to say that this was uh, about the first department store and what's very special, there are outstanding passageways that connect or interconnect these buildings inside. And it was not only the idea to let people hide somewhere from the rain and cold weather and so on, but it was to offer extra space for trade, more shops, more cafes, more restaurants inside. So let's have a look inside just for identification where we are if to go this way to the left we reach Venceslas Square if to turn the other way we would go to the Charles Square and the tower you can see in the distance it's a tower of the town hall of the new town now I have to be careful and I will cross yes the cars are so let's have a look at these details of this beautiful Art Nouveau decoration in metal. And you see the name of the owner. And look at beautiful door with a lot of this glass work. And we can continue through this passageway. And here you can, for instance, see the doors are closed, but yet there is a glass. And you can see details on the railing, on that metal work, the railing of the staircase on the way up. Obviously, with the time, a lot was changed, redeveloped. If you can imagine the ceiling here, was originally made of glass and the daylight used to come into the passageway of this kind covering the view of the facades of the buildings but yet the daylight would come in but it's not available now because uh, there were some technical problems and they were solved in the easiest way how well the glass from outside was covered and 
no more daylight, but maybe in the future this will be changed. Now we are actually turning to that more new part of 1930. So this is not Art Nouveau, this is more that Art Deco and Modernism. But you can also have a look here that the whole ceiling, look, if you imagine that all this once used to let the daylight come through, so once more, we are looking around, and here we are, there's a beautiful glass work on this side, and that's from around that year, 1930. Beautiful glass artwork in this passageway, so here we are, and we are going to turn combination of glass and metal. There's casino. Still, this is the part called Unovaku et Novaks. So it's the most common name in this country. Like somebody who is Novak, it's somebody new. So like a new man. <laughs> There's amazing, like a net of the corridors in one direction, in another direction. And let's continue. There was even a theater from the very beginning, from 1930. There was a theater, Osvobozene Divadlo, where famous actors, Voskovets and Verich, used to uh, give their performances. And we continue further on into the center that's called Lucerna. So, leaving House Unovaku, and in a moment, we'll enter another passageway. And this is the architecture. So you see the decoration is a bit different. More of the, like, gold uh, reflecting uh, decorations. Another Look, open space there. Here you can actually see the daylight coming in. But uh, I would like to continue uh, because I want to focus on Art Nouveau and uh, uh, not only the passageway. So maybe I will do another tour that will be specially for, uh, focused on passageways. Let's continue. So Lucerna, this was built by grandfather of uh, our ex-president Václav Havel. Here you can see the ceiling is actually uh, covered by glass and the daylight comes in. And here you can find an interesting statue by David Czerny from 1991, 1999. So you can have a look here. This strange statue. It's to reflect the statue on Wenceslas Square where you can find bronze Saint Wenceslas sitting on a horseback and looks like the horse is something that's temporary but the fame of Wenceslas as a Saint Wenceslas, patron saint of this country, once ruler of this country, goes forever. So he stays alive, the horse did not make it. And uh, under normal conditions I would say this is a very busy place. Many people come here. There is a movie cinema. Uh, there is a huge uh, concert hall where you would enter over there in the corner. Velki Sal means a large hall. So used for various concerts, meetings, conferences. Uh, in 1933, uh, the Zionist Congress, for instance, took place here and, and many others. It's just like the one that comes into my mind. And uh, this is all of uh, the beginning of the 20th century. I would like to mention another, another thing. There is a statue over there uh, that represents Václav Havel, but uh, the grandfather of uh, the Czech ex-president Václav Havel. And uh, there is a memorial place here where you can find the uh, portrait of brother 
of Václav Havel, who just recently passed away. So you can see his portrait. Well, let's continue. I would like to walk out from this interesting place that's also of the beginning of 20th century. This was actually the first example of those uh, uh, shopping passageways, shopping malls, if we can use it this way. And now we are entering another building that has also very interesting ceilings, even with the decoration. Look at that glasswork and it changes the impression of, of uh, the architecture. Let's continue. So this is the follow-up of that regular, of, of that first Art Nouveau. This is more that Art Deco, as you wanted to know, differences. Look at this. Look at those faces, these mascarons, gilded. Look at the ceiling, interesting glasswork on ceiling. And once more, this is so-called Palace Rococo. And let's continue. You can also admire beauty of like the metalwork. Uh, look at this, for instance, uh, like, like details of this kind that goes all the way, like decoration of the door. And you can actually see me as well in one of the mirrors. Hello. And here we are getting out. Again, you can focus, you can have a look and admire the metalwork, many of the details. And we are leaving this Rococo Palace. And now I would like to tell you a bit about the building in front of us. Hotel Europa. Now there is only the sign hotel. Uh, well, when this was built at the beginning of the 20th century, it was called Hotel at Archduke Stephen. But in 1924 it was purchased by entrepreneur Karel Schroebeck. And it was a very successful entrepreneur in hotel business and the hotel got his name, so Hotel Schroebeck. The hotel had additional decoration because on the top there was a statue of Europe by, Josef, uh, by Ladislav Shalom. But these statues are now taken out because the building is undergoing the restoration and in the future it is supposed to serve as a, as a new hotel under the management of uh, the Marriott. So you can see crane, you can see construction site down here. Uh, so this hotel is undergoing the restoration. There are actually two hotels, one next to the other. There's also Hotel Meran right next to it. And uh, it's the hotel that was built in 1906, while the uh, Hotel Europe, the bigger one, uh, it's the hotel that was uh, completed in 1905. Architects, uh, Bendelmeyer, Driag, Hipschmann, and also Jan Letzel. That name of Jan Letzel is very well known in Japan because Jan Letzel was the architect who designed, who created the uh, atomic palace or industrial palace that as the only structure survived the explosion of a uh, nuclear bomb uh, at the end of uh, World War II. So Jan Letzel, Czech architect but very active in, uh, in uh, Japan. Well, the history of this uh, hotel where you can also admire beautiful details, mosaics, uh, look at the metalwork on balconies, uh, look at that combination of colors, that central part painted in red makes it uh, dramatic in combination with, uh, with green. So some important moments, besides that, that it became the Hotel Schroebeck in 1924, 1912, it's when Franz Kafka made the only personal reading of his works in the interiors of this hotel in 1912. In 1950, 
Well, let me speak about another one. 1932 was the year when mayor of Chicago, Anton Chermak, visited Prague. He stayed in this hotel and a huge crowd came to greet him in this, in this hotel building. Then 1939, very important year, uh, the, uh, the World War II was just about to start and actually then it started in March of 1939 and Nicholas Winton, British entrepreneur, from here, here he had his office and from here he organized the transportation uh, of children, mostly Jewish children, to England. He managed to save altogether 669 children. Nicholas Winton, by the way, died six years ago and he was 106 years old when he died. Well, uh, 1951 is the year when the communism was already in progress and the hotel was nationalized. So now from 2016 it's undergoing the restoration. The Meran Hotel was already restored and it's in private hands. Uh, on the basis of restitutional law, the former owners managed to reclaim the hotel back. Now, let me show you where we are because I'm speaking about the hotel that's on this huge boulevard. We are on Wenceslas Square, where on the top, once there used to be the Horse Gate, this place was called Horse Market. Now there is a national museum and building of national museum from the end of the 19th century. And now let me show you the lower part of this Wenceslas Square and I would like to show you here the very first Art Nouveau building that uh, was built at the very end of the 19th century. But let me return back to the to the sidewalk. So Wenceslas Square, it's a very much the combination of architectural style, very much uh, like what you're looking at, that pink, salmon colored, cream colored building on the corner, that's from the end of the 19th century and it was built for the insurance company. Reunion Assicurazione, over there. Assicurazioni Generali started in 1831, but the building actually is from the second half of 1800s. But for instance, this brutalism architecture of later time, there is this duplex, the duplex, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a bar, uh, on the club on the top, but uh, now even I, I don't really know how to call this uh, building, but uh, it serves as a department store, but actually now I think it's closed because due to pandemic of, of uh, coronavirus, the things are not how they are supposed to be. So we have to wait, but you see that the place is quite busy. And I would like to show you some few more buildings in this lower part of Wenceslas Square. We can walk through the middle of the square. The transportation here is restricted. The idea for the future is to conduct a tram line here through the, uh, through the square. It used to be here, not anymore. Once more, let's have a look at this interesting view of Wenceslas Square. National Museum on the top, we have a good light. It's uh, later afternoon, 10 past 5 at the moment. You see Wenceslas Square is undergoing the real restoration, so there should be more trees, trams, uh, more like pedestrian areas. So when you come here, maybe, I hope soon, but uh, I would like to invite you, definitely, I'll be happy to see you here. And I hope that uh, such a situation will be soon and wherever you are from, you'll be able, you'll have an opportunity to come back again.
So the building that I want to show you, I hope we'll have an opportunity to see it properly. You can see combination of architectural styles, for instance, this one, the house derricks. Uh, only the facade was left, all behind was made new. The other ones, they actually have the interiors preserved and here you can see it's really a serious reconstruction. What I want to show you is actually this building in front of us. I don't know how much you'll be able to recognize the details. From 1891, look at this so-called Peterka house and I'm trying to make it as big as possible. Look at those floral motifs in between these two statues. This is from 1899, the first appearance of Art Nouveau in Prague. This was designed by Jan Kotiera, who later on worked in style of modernism. So he considered that Art Nouveau uh, was not really his cup of tea, I would say, and he moved on uh, applying, I would say, the ideas of cubism, then constructivism, functionalism, and so on. So very successful, very active Jan Kotiera architect. And this was this building. You can recognize in between trees that there are these floral motifs. So that is typical for Art Nouveau. So I'm speaking about this building. Now, I want to show you another one, and we'll turn, we'll leave Wenceslas Square, so goodbye to this construction site. Let's have a look on the upper part of Wenceslas Square, we are returning. You can find when I spoke about functionalism, so this is around that 1930 Hotel Julisch in white and blue, and there are more buildings in uh, this area. Wenceslas Square is really very, how to call it, eclectic mixture of architectural styles. The newest one is this Van Graaf the, that was completely redeveloped and this is really new. Uh, so speaking about Art Nouveau, as I said, it was something uh, very new. In the world, the names uh, vary. So Germans call it Jugendstil. Uh, in Czech, we say Secese. That comes from Latin, like secession, as like separating from the previous style, something new, something different. Uh, in Russian they call it still modern. So it was something new in ornamentation and inspiration in, uh, in nature, in folk art, in oriental art, in legends, in uh, romanticism. So something fresh and new. And this our tour is actually through the very center of the city. Now we are turning to the street called Jindrishska. So we started on the opposite side. We started in that street that I'm now looking to where the tram goes to. So that was Vodičkova street. In the distance you may recognize that house Unovaku. But we are turning the opposite way and walking this way. So we are passing the former insurance building that now serves as an office space. We are going to walk by the main post office or general post office building, which is also interesting. It has interesting uh, decorations, frescoes inside, but I'm afraid they would not allow me to enter with the camera, so I'm not going to risk it. And we are looking in the distance at the bell tower or the 
belfry of the church of St. Henry. Because the street where we are right now, Jindřišská, Jindřich, it's a Czech pronunciation of the name Henry. There is a church. We cannot see the church at the moment. We can only see the bell tower, which was built originally in the 15th century. And uh, the bell tower was built next to the church in order to hold much bigger bells that the church was not able to hold. So main original post office on our right hand side. You can see the flag yellow with the blue trumpet on. And on this street I would like to mention hotel named Hotel Palace. Hotel Palace and it's called Palace Art Nouveau. So now the hotels, I'm not even sure if this Hotel Palace is open, but uh, uh, it's definitely example of Art Nouveau. I'll try to cross the road to let you have a look from the opposite side. It's quite busy. Jindřišská, you can see the name of the street quite difficult in Czech language. Czech language is quite complicated. So, Hotel Palace, we can see the name. This was a popular hotel built at the beginning of the 20th century, but unfortunately under communism it was uh, redeveloped in a in very unsensitive way, meaning that uh, a lot of its Art Nouveau beauty in the interiors was unfortunately ruined. Otherwise, this was the hotel where even Enrico Caruso used to stay when he came to Prague at, his, at the beginning of his uh, career. Uh, also Josephine Baker in 1927 was here. By the way, speaking about Enrico Caruso, on the 2nd of September this year, it will be 100 years from his death. Uh, Caruso sank in the state opera, which is at the end of the street over there. So it was not far. I hope you can see it at the end of the street. I'll try to get it closer. State Opera building or at the beginning German theater is that yellow building at the very end of this street. But let's return back and let's have a look at this Hotel Palace. And on the opposite side of the Hotel Palace, I mean in the street that goes along the hotel, there is a museum that I would like to point on. So again, I have to be careful while returning back. As I said, now I'm not even sure whether the hotel is opened. The hotel is here, but what I would like to draw your attention to is the museum dedicated to Alphonse Mucha. So next to names of uh, Gustav Klimt uh, or um, Horta in Belgium, Klimt in, uh, in Austria, uh, Fouquet in France, uh, uh, Lalik and Galais. Uh, there's also the name of Alphonse Mucha. Museum is closed, but there are some pictures and I would like to tell you a few words about Alphonse Mucha, since he was one of the leading representatives, artists of the period of Art Nouveau that was even called Still Mucha, because he lived in France and there they used to pronounce his name uh, that we say Mucha, that's C-H, they pronounce as, as Sh Mucha. So Alphonse Mucha was uh, born in 1860, we can also see his works represented right here. Maybe I will stand this way that you have a good view of one of these ladies. Well, hard to imagine that when he applied to Academy of Fine Arts in Prague in 1878, when uh, he was 18 years old, 
he was not accepted. So then he went to Vienna, he became an artist, uh, not, not an artist, he, he became, um, he started to draw decorations for uh, theater. Unfortunately, none of them were preserved. Uh, then he lived and studied in Munich and uh, eventually uh, he was uh, lucky enough he was very hard working so I would say if you work hard so then that good luck it's something that uh, is um, the probability of good luck increases that's what I would say uh, so his lucky moment came Lucky moment of Alphonse Mucha came in 1894 when he had an opportunity to create the first poster for performance of Sarah Bernhardt and it was the performance called Gismonda. The poster of Gismonda on the streets of Paris started sensation, it became the collector's item and, and that's how Alphonse Mucha became famous, well known and uh, then he started to work hard. More posters for Tosca, for Hamlet. Uh, his uh, posters were really, his idea was to uh, make art available, accessible to publics. Well, uh, together with the works for posters for Sarah Bernhardt, he also cooperated with George Fouquet, jeweler in, in Paris, and uh, he created, for instance, bracelets and some jewelry that Sarah Bernhardt used. Uh, we have to say that uh, he became also a teacher, educator of this Art Nouveau style around the year 1900 in Academy of Colarossi. Uh, he created even teaching documents that was called Document Decoratif. In 1904 he traveled to New York where he met uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Um, he worked, uh, he created pavilion for the Universal Exhibition in Paris in 1900. Uh, then he got married in 1906 and what was very important, another good luck that uh, is available to those who are prepared, as we say in Czech language. Uh, he met industrialist, a very rich American man, Charles Richard Crane. And this man, whose son actually later became the first ambassador of United States in the Czech Republic, when Czechoslovakia, not Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia, when Czechoslovakia was declared in 1918, so from 1919 to 1921, son of this Charles Richard Crane was the first American ambassador. So, uh, why I'm speaking about Crane, it's because he sponsored, he gave Alphonse Mucha the money for his, like, flagship work, I would say, uh, when Mucha came with an idea to create Slav epic. Uh, we speak about a series of 20 huge canvases. He worked on them from 1912 to 1926. And they are really large ones, like I would say, well, four times each window, maybe six times each window. And uh, uh, the Slav epic represents there's actually here, look, there is a book that's, I hope you can recognize, there is a book dedicated to Slav, the Slav epic, Slovanska epopei. Uh, Twenty of huge paintings that represent 20 different events in Slavic countries, meaning not only Czechia, but Slovakia, Poland, Russia, Bulgaria, and, and the others. So that's what I wanted to tell you about Alphonse Mucha. As I said, he was very hardworking. He died when he was 78 years old in 1939, shortly after uh, the beginning of a third war. Uh, actually, prior the beginning, prior the official beginning of World War II, but after the occupation of this country in summer of 1939, and this country was occupied on the 14th of March 1939. So that's enough of uh, Alphonse Mucha, just to add that uh, Slav Epic is at the moment not displayed anywhere, uh, and there's a question, because Alphonse Mucha gave those 
canvases to city of Prague, but under condition. City of Prague is obliged to create a special pavilion or uh, create a special place where these canvases will be well, uh, well displayed. So, and at the moment, uh, this is a big question about where, and that's why uh, legally Prague is not supposed to, how to say, claim the ownership towards these paintings. And grandson of Alphonse Mucha, John Mucha, who is a retired uh, British uh, banker, he tries to organize this and find the solution. So, let's continue. We are looking at the bell tower, which was originally constructed in the 15th century, but it was redeveloped at uh, the 19th century. You can even recognize the dates by the, by the uh, dial. By that dial, there is a date 1879. If I stop and maybe try to make it closer, so in the middle you can see the dial, and there is a date 1879. But let's return back, and I want to show you another Art Nouveau example, but in a totally different style. So now I have to walk for a little longer distance, we'll see the church of Saint Henry and Saint Cunicunda. Those are two saints who lived at uh, the beginning of the 11th century. And the church of Saint Henry was actually founded by King Charles IV in the middle of the 14th century. cemetery. There is no cemetery now, but still some historic gravestones are around the around the church. So, well, let's walk around. So here we are looking at this originally Gothic church, but redeveloped. There are some Baroque statues. This one on the left, that's Saint John of Nepomuk, one of the patron saints of this country. The church is open and I will just get a little closer so maybe you can have a look inside. It's very Baroque inside. So here we are out, I don't want to speak inside, and you can see some old gravestones even here by the wall, and I said that some of them are from outside, so let's continue. Yes, so there you can find some more, so there used to be quite a large cemetery, but it was abolished. It was abolished uh, at the end of the 18th century, in late 1700s. In a moment we'll approach the street that's called Jerusalem Street. And what I want to show you, it's so-called Jerusalem Synagogue. Uh, it was originally called Jubilee Synagogue, or Great Synagogue. It was built at the beginning of the 20th century. 
1906 in order to replace the function of three demolished synagogues in the Jewish quarter. Jewish quarter was completely redeveloped at the end of the 19th century, beginning of 20th century. And three of these synagogues were torn down. But their function was then missing and that's why there was a piece of land purchased and there was a very decorative building constructed that combines the Art Nouveau style with Moorish style. That's very unusual. Just only now it's undergoing the restoration. But yet, uh, even though it's covered, uh, you can recognize details. It's a very interesting combination of this gold, brown, blue, green, or green-like turquoise. So look at this building. I'll try to find some better place to give you an opportunity to see the beauty of this building. I'll try to get a little bit into the distance so you can recognize. So very unusual combination of Art Nouveau with, uh, in this case, Moorish style so-called Jerusalem Synagogue because we are on Jerusalem Street. Well, when I do this walking tour in real, not online, uh, then I usually continue through this street and it's because in this direction, in the park, it's possible to find the statue of Woodrow Wilson. That's one thing. And another, can you recognize over there a tower with some golden decoration on the top. So it's a part of the... I hope that the camera gets focused. So generally what you see in the middle, it's a corner of the main train station. It's another very significant example of Art Nouveau architecture, but I would uh, believe that that deserves a special uh, tour just only of uh, this train station as a building when the restoration is completed. So now I would like to show you a couple of more things. The end of the tour I plan by the most significant Art Nouveau building in Prague and it's by the municipal house but by the distance it involves a walk so Stay with me <laughs> and in a short while we'll be there. I'll try to walk as fast as possible. In front of us, that big building that's now undergoing the restoration, it used to be uh, the sugar industry insurance uh, company building. It's from around 1930, that's more that Art Deco style. Now it's undergoing the restoration since in the future we'll have another hotel here. But now I think it's a question. There are so many hotels in Prague, no wonder. Uh, prior the pandemic of coronavirus in, a nine, uh, in 2019, Prague was visited by more than 8 million visitors and last year it dropped by more than 90% down. So uh, it's a big difference and many hotels closed down since they simply don't have any, any people. So before we leave this place, once more the tower of bell tower of St. Henry, for instance, under normal conditions. It has several floors. There is a whiskey bar, there is a restaurant, there is a view terrace with the Carillon, uh, there is an uh, exhibition space where 
uh, there are various exhibitions organized and so on. So that's the, that's the tower. And here we are looking at the Church of St. Henry. And we continue now to the square, one of the significant three squares of uh, historic new town. In 1348, Charles IV founded new town. It was really new by that time, and uh, the king wanted to settle it as quickly as possible. So he encouraged people, if you are able to build uh, your stone house within a year and a half, you'll be free of taxes for the following 12 years. So there was a huge boom and uh, the places were settled. However, Newtown, unlike the old town, was uh, very much built according plans. And that's why the squares are more spacious. And for instance, Wenceslas Square, it used to be a horse market. This was a, uh, this uh, is a hay market, and the name here is preserved till these days. Just only nobody trades hay here anymore. But there are some very interesting buildings around, including some Art Nouveau ones. I will not go directly to them, but I'll try to focus on them. And I'm speaking about these ones. If you have a look at those like metal decorations, oh, now the camera works on its own. I'm trying to... No, it doesn't work really quite well. So this way. If you can see in the middle, uh, you can recognize details in Art Nouveau style and that's of the beginning of the 20th century, even though the buildings need some restoration work. Generally, I would speak about Art uh, Nouveau being represented in many, many parts of Prague. Maybe in one of other tours, we'll walk through some less known, less uh, um, like out of center places, and we can see some of the buildings in Art Nouveau style and focus on their details. So now I need to cross to the other side. So let me, there is a tram coming over there. And uh, as soon as the tram is away, I will, I will cross the road to the other side and we'll walk through the street that's called the Dlaždjena, which means paved street. It was paved as early as in the 14th century, so very special, very unusual because the pavement was in most of the places uh, uh, late, much, much later. There is a Philippinian embassy here, and if you have a look on the flag of Philippines, you can see the combination of white, red, and blue with that uh, triangle in the center that looks a bit similar, similar to Czech flag. Similar, but not the same, of course. There's also an interesting sculpture work in the middle of the square by Anna Chromi, a Czech artist, so dancers and singers. Where Alphonse Mucha, uh, not Alphonse Mucha, uh, excuse me, not Alphonse Mucha, but the writer Franz Kafka. Yes, Franz Kafka, Max Brod, and uh, various other German speaking, German writing uh, artists and writers used to come meet together, discuss their problems. But unfortunately, it was very much. Uh, related to the owner. The cafe tender is 
Mr. Suchanek, who was the soul of this Café Arco, Tavarna Arco. But when he died in 1929, it was the end of Café, it was the end of the, this uh, inspiring ambiance that uh, Genius Lotzi, as it is called, was gone. Today the building belongs to the state and frankly it's not in very good conditions. But to remind you about Franz Kafka, there is a photograph, maybe you can recognize here on the corner. There is a photography, there is a picture of, uh, no it's not very well visible and moreover the tramp is coming. So, we'll continue. Uh, I would like to mention, this is a dangerous intersection, dangerous crossing. And we are looking at the oldest train station in Prague. It's from the middle of the uh, 19th, uh, middle of the 19th century. The first uh, first train station that's named after the first president of Czechoslovakia, Tomas Garek Masaryk, Masarykovo Nádraží. So once more. Kafka photography. I hope now my second try. Yes, if you can recognize him, he's on this. Now, now my, my camera actually works. This is what I want to show you. That's Franz Kafka. Franz Kafka was a four famous Jewish writer who actually made his living as a as a lawyer. That's not well known. Um, it's not um, even some members of his family had no idea that that he was a that he was a writer, and uh, he published very few of his works because he was very critical to his works. Uh, due to this, uh, he was like one of those uh, um, who, who wanted. I would I would call it perfectionism or perfectionism somebody who wanted to do everything in a perfect way and if it was not perfect it was not good so uh, he published only very few of his works and then when he was dying of tuberculosis he was only about 40 years old uh, he asked his friend Max Brod to burn all his handwriting which actually Max Brod promised to do but when Franz Kafka died, he decided not to do it. So, thanks to Max Brod, many of Kafka's works were preserved and published only after his death. Now, I would like to show you this beautiful building. Look, this is in Art Nouveau style Hotel Central. Over there, this is one of those first hotels His name is on the top. Bielski and Oman, two architects who created this hotel in 1901. So if you recall that Peterka, Peterska house uh, on the grounds of Wenceslas Square as the very first one in 1899. So two years later there was this building completed in very beautiful Art Nouveau style and you can recognize it looks like a tree like a tree of life in the very center you can see those plants you can see faces you can see beautiful metalwork so this building served as a cabaret as a movie cinema in 1929 uh, and mainly as a hotel. So there's a lot of symbolism, that gold decoration, that, that, uh, deco that, that use of gold was very much inspired by the architecture in uh, Vienna. Uh, looks like the hotel is completely closed, which is very pretty. I hope that when pandemic of coronavirus is over, they will reopen again, because in my opinion, it was a nice hotel. And let's leave this place and we have the about the last, as I said, the highlight, that's the municipal house, Obecni Dom in Czech language. Uh, the tower we see in front of us, it's so-called powder tower, powder gate. Uh, it's um, one of, last, last of the towers preserved of once the 
uh, fortification of the old town. There used to be walls, there used to be gateways, there was even a moat, the water ditch, filled with the water. The water of the river was conducted into that moat. And this is the only gateway preserved because when Newtown was founded by Charles IV in 1348, Prague got much larger and it got new fortifications. So the old system was not needed anymore. But one gate, one tower was preserved. And it was this one. However, it had been redeveloped several times. The name comes from the period more towards the 19th century when there was a military academy right next to it and it served as a storage place, place for gunpowder. So that's where the name comes from. Powder tower or powder gate. More like a gate than a tower. But it has a shape of a tower. It has some redevelopment of the 19th century as well. Mostly the shape of the tower, but also some of the facade decoration. Under normal conditions, the tower is accessible. It offers a very nice view. And through the gate, in the distance, you can recognize you can recognize the tower of the town hall on the grounds of the old town square. Uh, that's that tower in the distance where you find the astronomical clock. So it's, uh, it's 10 minutes to 6, so in about 10 minutes people who are around the Old Town Square can see the astronomical clock working. But here we are on the street called On the Moat, Naptikopje in Czech language. The scaffolding on the right, it's on one of the bank buildings. Komerční banka, it's undergoing the restoration. And Czech Central Bank, National Bank, it's more the constructivism style. That's this one with the statue, like a statue of liberty on the top. But it's a genius with a torch and a lion on his side. The bronze statue on the top of this constructivist building from 1930s. And it's a Czech National Bank, so Czech Central Bank, that's this one. And the highlight of Art Nouveau, it's this building. So, this is the place where there used to be the royal court in the uh, 15th century. Uh, there used to be the uh, seminary. There used to be the Church of St. Adalbert. Uh, there used to be a military academy. All that was demolished at the beginning of the 20th century. And then in uh, uh, 1903, when all the building, uh, all the site was uh, empty and available, available for new constructions, then there was a competition of architects. The task was to create the building that would represent Czechs. We have to realize that we were under Austro-Hungarian Empire. Germans have their culture centers here. They have German theater and so on. And here, uh, the idea was to have uh, the representative center for Czech arts, for Czech artists, for Czech people, for Czech music, and so on. It was already the National Theater, yes, but there was supposed to be something where people could also come to eat and dance and sing and just like um, to, to, to live that, uh, that, that life, everyday life, being uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a very beautiful place. So, what we are looking at, it's the building uh, that was designed by two architects, Antonin Balšánek and Oswald Polivka. So, Oswald Polivka, if you recall, that first building we started by uh, this uh, walking tour, S he also designed that building Unováku, and here he was one of two architects who made the design for this outstanding uh, building. It lasted several years. So 1904, they, uh, these two architects won the competition. 1905, the works were started. And official opening was on the 22nd of November of 1912, the year of 
Titanic, Titanic sinked. Our municipal house is still here. Well, it's my old joke. Uh, this building was, by the time when it was completed, the most modern building in Prague in this country. So imagine, it was equipped with, besides all that beauty, so technical equipment, it had uh, accumulator station, it had transformer station, it had uh, hydraulic and electric elevators, it had steam laundry and drying uh, as well, drying system. Uh, it had uh, water conducted through the whole building. It had special bottle washing device because there were restaurants and there were no plastic bottles, so only glass. Um, it had the tube post and even in-house phones. Uh, so no wonder that when the construction was started or when the design was made, the uh, budget was planned or the expenses for such a new new um, project were planned for three million by that time Czech crowns and when the building was completed the budget doubled so six million were spent many people were critical about it but nowadays we appreciate it's really beautiful and I love this building and uh, I would like to point your attention, draw your attention to that uh, beautiful mosaic that decorates. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, allegory of Prague and the golden text around, let me uh, translate the inscription. Hail to you Prague, may you resist the anger of times as you have resisted storms of ages. That's that golden inscription about that half-circled mosaic and uh, it's the... Uh, there's also a symbol of Prague above, uh, that gold red with the open gate. Down here there are lovely statues, uh, these uh, light holders, and there are many of the details is by, uh, by Ladislav Shalom, the architect. Uh, you can find various allegories, allegory of music, it's in these uh, round uh, or faces, look at, look at those details of the face. Uh, various other details. So this is something that when you come to Prague uh, you can go around and see it but mainly you have to go inside to appreciate the beauty. There's even one of the here above the balcony there is the Lord Mayor's Hall which was completely designed by Alphonse Mucha. So this is a very very special place originally called the representative house it's now known more as the municipal house and I would recommend you look at the uh, website Obecni Dum or I think it works also municipal house if you google it and you find the website of this building you can also find the views like that the online or virtual views um, uh, perhaps the term virtual I mean like, like the uh, three-dimensional views of the interiors of the concert hall for instance that has the capacity of 1200 people uh, of uh, all those beautiful halls including that one designed by Alphonse Mucha and uh, I think well that's about uh, the time to finish uh, this tour uh, it was maybe a little longer but there's so much to speak about Art Nouveau we still have not seen the buildings on a national street or uh, we have not seen the insurance company building on Spalena Street and numerous others I said that even outskirts have beautiful representation of Art Nouveau but uh, that's about it and I would like to uh, thank you very much. I'm trying to turn the camera in my oh, uh, my direction. So let me turn the way that the municipal house is behind me. But uh, yeah, it's there. Okay.
and uh, I would like to thank very much to all of you who are watching my videos. I would like to continue. I'm not sure, maybe write me if you want to have shorter tours that I should split them maybe by buildings or just by streets. Or if you are okay with this length, I would appreciate all your comments. I would like to thank very much uh, to uh, Tame Raffaele who is watching me. Um, uh, all those of you who are giving me comments, so I'm sending uh, my greetings to all around the world and thank you very much for watching me. All the best and I hope to see you one day and soon I hope to see you, to meet you in Prague again. All the best. Stay healthy. Stay well.